Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. It's November 18th, and I am here to talk to you a little bit about my stitching today. So far, I hope to get even more done. Well, I had to catch up from yesterday's uh, call because, you know, I spent the day uh, working on a finish, and I decided that would be a good way to end the vlog for that uh, video and it is processing now uploading now so hopefully I'll get that out today so I grabbed my bingo call from yesterday which is a Madame Lafay chart um, Niche at Montaigne or snow and mountains and I had to put a hundred stitches in it and I've been working in this square right here so let me show you what I got done. I did get 104 stitches in. Decided to stop there because I'm excited about today's call. I'll tell you about that in a minute. But here's my snow and mountains. I've finished the first row of windows and I've started on the second. And this is where the end of the second window is. The brown a window frame will come down here and come right under these stitches here. So that's about how much goes on to the next page. So this page goes over to here and it stops here and the page below it starts up here. It doesn't it doesn't start and stop at good places, but <laughs> it's manageable. And the worst part is there is no repetitive rows, none. You just you have nothing to show you the relationship between the last stitch on one page and the first stitch on the other other than counting around from the borders. So I don't like that. Uh, if I could give some feedback to Madame Lafay, it would be put at least one row of repeat in there so we can see how it all matches up together. Um, but anyway, it's doable. You can figure it out. And this is what I did. So I came over here today and I did these little snowflakes here and I did this big snowflake here, and there's a little snowflake right there touching it. I'm not sure why they did that, uh, because it was confusing, because I was expecting the, you know, snowflake to be asymmetrical, and with that extra snowflake, it's not. But it took me a minute to figure out what that, what that was. And then I came down here, and I started working on the snow that's on the bottom corner of the windows. Trying, I'll, um, I did stitch in two colors today. There's a little tiny bit of pale blue right in here and I got those I don't think it was more than six stitches in that color but at the very end I only needed about two stitches and so that's what I chose to do to get my two <laughs> stitches anyway there you have it Nijet Montaigne or Snow and Mountains and I'm almost almost finished with this window and then I, I can move on across here so Good progress. I considered stitching 200 more stitches in it for um, a challenge that I needed and I could use a coupon to use whatever whip I wanted. But I have to still stitch the same number of stitches and it's 300. And this fabric is extremely tight. It's a 32 count, but it is extremely tight. And if I counted it out, it would probably be more like a 40 or a 36 at least. Um, anyway, it's hard for me to see, and it's been the first fabric I've struggled with since I had my surgery, uh, my cataract surgery. So I grabbed my cheaters today, and I tried them out, and it was great. I could see it just beautifully, so I had to wear them again for the first time. Uh, so I'll have to remember that when I pull this one out to go over and get my cheaters, and and use them because I don't keep them handy like I used to. Okay, so I said a moment ago I was excited about today's bingo call. And the reason that I am is because it's Let Love Rain. And if you uh, remember from my very last video, I mentioned that uh, my Let Love Rain is also my final prompt that I need for the acrostic in my daily 30 group. It's the final thing I need for my word fox in my acrostic, my second acrostic in the magazine monthly challenge group. 
And it's also my last one I need for 24 hours of cross stitch. And um, so it's like, oh my goodness, it's just gonna meet everything. It's gonna wrap up everything for the month practically. Uh, the only thing that I will have left after this 300 stitches in Let Love Rain, uh, other than the rest of the bingo, which will happen, you know, each day, but as far as all my other uh, acrostics will all be finished. I'm excited. Um, and then I will just be doing the, you know, the weekly challenges that uh, I've already started uh, the, the most recent one yesterday. So it's lovely. It's fun. I'm, I'm excited about it. And I had just said at the end of my last video that I hadn't done the let love rain prompts on anything because it hadn't been called yet. I was, I was waiting so that I could stitch it one time and, and then it got called today. That's pretty neat. I was excited about that. Okay, that's it. I'm going to grab my Let Love Rain. I'm going to get it set up over here on my floor stand, and I am going to get started stitching it. Today, we were asked to uh, post a picture in the Magazine Monthly um, Challenge Group in our event for the Turkey Trot, because we start that tomorrow, and uh, we had to post our normal stitchy spot today. So I guess tomorrow, whenever we pick our alternative spot that we're going to stitch this project in, um, I'll have to figure out where I'm going to do that. I guess we post that picture too. I don't know, but I will. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. I think that'll be fun and, um, you know, it'll, it'll be something exciting to do. So I'll have a new start tomorrow. I'll be sitting somewhere else <laughs> than, than right here but uh, I'll share that with you. So I will talk to you soon, hopefully, with uh, stitching to share on Let Love Rain. In the meantime, happy stitching, everybody. Hi, everyone. I am back again on the 18th of November, and today I am thrilled to be able to share with you that I finished working on my prompt on Let Love Rain. This was called um, on my bingo call, and it's a Teresa Kogut, and I'm going to show you the picture of this beautiful, beautiful sampler. Isn't that gorgeous? <sighs> I can't wait to have this one stitched and in my bedroom because the colors match perfectly. But today, I stitched 300 stitches so that I could meet all the prompts that I needed to. I had to stitch it today for bingo, but I had it in my daily 30 group, which required 300 stitches, so I did that number of stitches. Now I can finish the acrostic in the daily 30 group because this was for the letter U, and the letter U is in the alphabet in this. And it was also for the letter R in my 24 hours of cross stitch, arbitrary, it was the, the last R, for let love reign in the title. So let me just show you what I got to. 300 stitches, it's not exciting. It's the inner border. As you know, I frogged uh, 700 and some odd stitches out of that border. That's the wavy border when I realized I had an error up here when I had skipped one of those flowers. And I fixed it all up and I finished the top all the way across. So now I came underneath that border and I started the inner border and I have it as all the way across and down a little bit on both sides. And then I think the next thing I will do the next time I work on it is I may start on the inside and work all the way across the top of the inside and just keep bringing the border down as I go. Um, I'll either do that or I'll get brave and do the border all the way around. <laughs> but I think I'm just going to bring it down as I go. Um, so, uh, this is a bed sheet. I'm in the member of the bed sheet club, as you can see. This is Grandma's slip. 
it was the call for fabric. I wouldn't have chosen it otherwise. I don't particularly like grunge. That's just not my style. Um, but um, thinking that with all the stitching on this, it's not going to show that much anyway. Um, but I wanted to get what was called for because it just looked so beautiful together. And I knew that the silks would just pop on it. So I ordered the uh, silk packs from Garand Stitchery. So Gary and Ronnie took good care of me uh, when I was kidding this up. And um, so I appreciate that. Thank you guys. And um, I got my Christmas box from them and I've opened mine and I'm not going to share it with you today because they are doing an unboxing on their channel this Friday. And I don't want to do mine before they do theirs. Uh, I'll, I'll let you watch them. <laughs> um, I think it'll be fun because they're going to have the designer with them when they unbox it. But I will tell you this. I was thrilled. Absolutely thrilled when I got my box. So guys, you hit it out of the park. Um, Gary and Ronnie do everything first class. I'll just tell you that. Uh, the entire package was first class. Every piece was wrapped beautifully. Um, and all the theme went together. And I just, there wasn't a single thing in there that I didn't love. Just absolutely love. So I'm very happy with my box. And I hope that if you didn't get one this year, that you'll jump on it next year. And I'm hoping that they'll do it again. Um, so anyway, um, I want to thank you guys. I love my box and, um, I can't wait to start, uh, playing with it. I don't want to show it on here until you're unboxing. So we'll wait for that. All right. I'm going to let you go and hopefully I can talk with you if I get some more stitching done tomorrow. Happy stitching everybody. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back. This is Dina. Um, today is the 19th of November. I've had to stop and think. <laughs> Time is flying by so quickly. I just wanted to come today and film this little piece um, to say thank you uh, for all of you who have subscribed. Many of you have been uh, subscribers of my channel for the entire time. Uh, some of you have um, been here for a number of years and some are brand new, but I cherish each and every one of you. I am still able to try to answer all of your comments. So if you've left a comment ever and I didn't answer you, I have not seen it for some reason. So I did get um, a couple of times when we were traveling, I might have been tardy in getting back to you, but I try to let you know when I'm going to be out and about like that so that you won't uh, be worried, that you'll know that I'll, I'll answer you as soon as I get home. I just cherish your time and your interest, and um, you're also very supportive and kind in your comments. And so today, I just want to say thank you. And the way I'm going to say I appreciate you is to do a little giveaway. Um, but I have seven things to give, and that is because we hit 7,000 subscribers uh, on my channel. So I thought, well, one for every thousand. That would be good. That gives us a good uh, number of seven. So I will show you what I'm going to give you and tell you the keyword to put in the comments and all the rules, the normal rules apply. So please don't say giveaway or win or, you know, free. <laughs> I think that attracts the trolls as we all know. But if you will, in your comment, use any one of these words or all of them. You are welcome to try for as many as you would like, um, all that interests you. But once you've won one, if your name comes up again, I'm not going to give both to the same person. I want to have at least seven people get to enjoy. I hope you understand that. I think you do. It, this is open to anybody, uh, international uh, as well. 
uh, because I'm just getting charts this time. And I did that on purpose so that I could include everybody. So let's get started. The very first one I have for you is a brand new chart. I took it out of the plastic so it wouldn't glare so bad, but I think the rest of them I've just left in. But um, I had planned on stitching this. And this is Celebrate Cross Stitch by Madame Chantilly. It's one of her tear trays. And I even had it in my whip go for this year. And when I went back through it this time, I looked at it and I thought, you know, I have a puppy dog. I don't have cats. This has two beautiful white cats playing on this tray. And I just think that someone who has cats would appreciate that so much more than me trying to rechart it. And a puppy dog would not be sitting on the tray. A cat would, but a puppy dog would not. So it didn't make a lot of sense for me to change it the way I had originally thought I would. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to share this with somebody. So it's a brand new chart, it's never been used. And uh, I hope if you uh, are interested in uh, Madame Chantilly, I'll try to get it a little bit closer so you can see. It's got floss bobbins hanging out of the tree. It's got a cross-stitched uh, piece here that looks like stork scissors. It's got floss in it. It's very, very cute. If you're interested in this one, please use the word celebrate in your comment because the name of it is Celebrate Cross Stitch. So this one is Celebrate. Um, the next one that I have for you is um, a designer that I've done a couple of things by over the years and this was gifted to me and I have thought about stitching it and have decided that I'm not going to, I'm going to gift it instead. So this is a Silver Creek sampler and I'm not sure that it has, yeah, 47 hearts is the name of it. I'll read it to you first. 47 hearts are too few to hold the love I have for you. So it's a good Valentine piece. You can see why I got it. I thought I would stitch it for my husband, but I found a couple of other things I'm gonna do instead. And um, so I wanna pass this along so somebody can be stitching it for their uh, mate. And um, if you like this one, just put sampler. Sampler for Silver Creek samplers. I have just been watching several um, floss tubes recently about the Jacob um, Palooza and that Caroline hosted in Canada. And I happen to have a beautiful pattern here uh, by Modern Folk Embroidery by Jacob and it's called the Linnet's Song. I think it's beautiful. And um, you can see it's just gorgeous. I think it looks as if it's stitched on a black fabric and all the other colors are stitched on top of it. So all the black that's in there is not stitched. That's how it appears to me. But of course you can do it however you want to because I know people change up the colors and everything else. And so since this is a modern folk embroidery pattern, let's use the word embroidery. For this one so if you're interested in this one the name of it is the linnet's song that must be the kind of bird that's in here um, then just use the word embroidery and that's e-m-b-r-o-i-d-e-r-y I, -E -R -Y. I, for, I frequently forget the i in there so i thought i'd just mention that to you okay i have done several patterns by this designer and they're always gorgeous and they usually have some sort of specialty stitch in it. I don't know if this one does or not because I have not checked. <laughs> but this one is the Drawn Thread and it's called Random Thoughts and it's really an alphabet. Let me see that one. And this one is special because it's coming complete with the floss 
and the embellishment pack. And they are antique, like bronze looking um, things. There's a um, key, pair of scissors, a thimble of thread, a small heart, a bell, and a little tiny, tiny button that all go on here. Um, and they're coming with it. So if you're interested in the drawn threads um, piece here that's called Random Thoughts, since it's an alphabet, and I think that word would stick out a little better for me than anything else I could come up with, we're gonna call this one Alphabet. So if you're interested in the drawn thread, um, then please say Alphabet. The next one I'm doing because I think some of you are collectors of this. Um, it's a P. Buckley Moss. It was one that was sent to me from a person's collection and so you'll understand why I mention that because it's actually autographed by P. Buckley Moss. But it is autographed to Claire in um, it looks like it says 1785 in Atlanta. That can't be right. <laughs> I don't think. So, um, anyway, but it says P. Buckley Moss. So, here it is. The name of this one is Taking Turns. And the mom is quilting. And apparently she's teaching her daughter. And so they are taking turns quilting. So if you, if you like to quilt, if you're a big P. Buckley Moss collector, you know, I've got this for you. So for P. Buckley Moss, let's just use the word Buckley and then I'll know which one you are referring to. This next one I have for you, I have stitched myself. I have it framed and up on my wall, uh, but this is not my pattern. This is a brand new pattern and it's called Seeking Refuge. It's by the Scarlet House. And it says, when the world seems to be out of control, I find a way to nurture my soul. Seeking refuge with needle and thread, the angst and anxiety no longer I dread. This is beautiful. It is, it looks pretty in the picture. It's even prettier when you, when you stitch it up in that house, look at the brick. It's gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. So this one's easy, let's just call it Refuge. Um, if you're interested in this one, just use the word Refuge in your comment. And the last one I've got for you sampler lovers, um, it's called Loving Others. And I don't think that I can pronounce the designer that well. It, L-A-G-N-I-A-P-P-E. So I don't know if it's Lagnia. I can't even try it. <laughs> I'm not even gonna try. Anyway, it's called Loving Others. It's got some of the most beautiful colors. I hope you can see those coming through in there. Those, it's got the beautiful teal blue, like a sky blue, bright pink but they're, they're used sparingly or just mainly in the border and the pink house. Isn't that gorgeous? Anyway, I think that's very, very pretty. And since I've already used the word sampler before, there are sheep in this one and there, I haven't used that one on anything else. So let's call this one sheep. So if you like the sampler loving others that has the sheep in it, <laughs> please use the word sheep in your comment and that way I'll know you're interested in this one. My plans are to wait until um, two weeks till after Thanksgiving because this video probably will not go up until after Thanksgiving and so um, it will be at least a full week after that you know, before I will draw names. So, um, let's just say I won't draw names till December 1st. How about that? Let's, let's put a date to it and I'll write that down here. I won't draw names till December 1st. Give you time, you know, to let me know what you want. 
and I hope that you take part and participate. And again, um, thank you so much for watching, for coming back again, for commenting. Um, I, I cherish it. Thank you so much. And I hope that you are getting a lot of stitching done. So that's what I'm about to go back and do. And I hope you are too. Happy stitching, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. It is Thursday, Thanksgiving Day, and I have come uh, here to say hello and to show you what I've been stitching for the last few days. Well, I started this on the 19th for the magazine monthly challenge groups turkey trot challenge, and we were to stitch on a piece that had a bird in it. So for me, that required a new start, and I decided to do Autumn Berries by Erica Michaels, and I decided to do the Scarecrow because there's a little black bird on his arm, and I had planned to do these in the uh, coming year anyway, so this would just let me get one of them started, and we were to stitch um, in a new stitchy spot somewhere where we don't usually stitch, and we were to stitch either five hours or 500 stitches. And I did that, and I didn't post it because I wasn't home to post it. And then I came home, and I started stitching on it again, and I uh, decided I would just finish it. And since we have until tomorrow to post it, I had plenty of time. So I have a new start and finish at the same time. So is that a SAF start and finish? Anyway, here is my happy fall, y'all which is the name of this berry, and there's my little bird on the scare scarecrow. Now, this fabric um, is, let me look at my card I wrote out on it, because the, the, I had to take the name of the fabric off the fabric. It's Wren by Picture This Plus, and it's a remnant. Um, that I had from a prior project. And so I have decided I can do one berry on this side and probably another berry on this side. Um, but if you'll notice, this is not my typical stitching. I did this with run strand. This is a picture this plus and it is tight. So I decided I would do it in one strand to see how I like it. And I think the coverage is fine. But I do like my loop start. I really do. And so um, I decided, even though this one's done in, in one strand, I don't know what I'll do with the other two berries. I may do them in one strand so they match. But um, one strand is easy because you don't have to worry about any twisting of the threads. That makes them lay really pretty. Everything is nice and smooth in there. But it is a little less vibrant than I like mine, I think. However, I'm very happy with it, and I enjoyed being a part of the uh, sal for the turkey trot, and I will um, post this now so that I can show I finished my participation and get back to my regular stitching. So this means I have to catch up on several days of my bingo stitching that I've let go because I was just absolutely obsessed with this one and um, I wound up stitching on it since the 19th and um, but anyway I got it done so I'm gonna post this now and I'm gonna pick up some catch-up stitching and I hope to be able to come back and talk with you about that later happy stitching everybody and happy Thanksgiving Well, welcome back. It's uh, later in the evening on November 23rd, and I want to share with you my catch-up stitching. While I was working on that um, turkey trot, <laughs> I missed getting some of my bingo prompts stitched, so today I spent the entire day catching up, and I'm going to show you all of it <laughs> right now. 
Um, my husband and I had a very quiet day. He ran in a turkey trot race, a 5K, here in Gainesville and enjoyed that. We had lunch together. And the rest of the day, we spent the day, we took a walk together and um, we have watched uh, Survivor and, you know, done a few things like that. But in between, I was stitching. So the first bingo call that I was late on <laughs> was my haunted mansion. Um, a haunted trio, I think I called it. Anyway, this is the first house of the haunted trio. And I am working on it. It is called the Haunted Mansion. And this is where I am on it now. I've made a great deal of progress. I am learning that this is 32 count and the beads are not going to fit as nicely. But I'm going to continue on with it because I'm not going to start it over. I'm using kit floss and I don't know that I would have enough to start it over. Uh, on the 28 count and you know I'm doing it on here because I want three side by side but anyway I made a good deal of progress on it today and I really like that I wound up stitching 118 stitches on it today and a lot of that was beading I beaded this whole little section here um, so that was good. I did that and did all the stitching uh, and now I've started stitching the cross stitch below that to do the next swipe across. There's beading to be done in this rooftop and I'll probably do that um, before I start the rest of the stitching underneath it, trying to bead as I go. So that is my haunted mansion. My next uh, catch-up was uh, Hawk Run Hollow, and um, I was able to stitch on Hawk Run Hollow, and I did 139 stitches, and I'll show you what I got done with that. I finished this arch here, and I stitched all of that arch there, and believe it or not, that totaled 139 stitches today but that was good I got that whole color completed for that section it's used more but I got that part of it done which was great that color will be used for the sails as well but that met the little prompt that I needed Now, let's see, on the 22nd, it was Stitcher's 12 Days. Pardon the zipper. Okay, so on my Stitcher's 12 Days, I worked on it and I did 233 stitches because I wanted to complete something. So this is my part I did today and then I'll show you all of it together but I did the greenery and the ribbon that goes over the silver bells because it says it's eight the thimbles they look like bells but they're thimbles I did the greenery and the ribbon but I haven't backstitched it but I already had 233 stitches and I had to move on so um, that's you know how far I got today. I'll show you my uh, progress on it though. This is what it looks like from the beginning down to where I'm at. These, this will have buttons all around it and I'm not put, I'm not putting those on yet because the Q-snap, you know, will break them and then I'll finish up this motif hopefully the next time I get a stitch on it. Um, that's a, it's a pretty big motif, so uh, this, this only needing 100 stitches in this one, um, but kind of, you know, made me kind of stop where I was. But anyway, I enjoyed stitching on it so much. It was so pretty. And it felt so big because it's 28 count. <laughs> it was so easy to see. It was great. <laughs> anyway... Okay, so what I have left that I haven't done yet is today's. 
Uh, and today's call was number 17 on my Whipgo board. And it was my Whipgo call. And my only Whipgo call I have left for this month is Nativity. And I do need to put more time in it. I need to put three hours in it before the end of the month to hit my prompt. So I will be pulling that out in the morning and I will be working on Nativity. I'm not gonna start it tonight, it's too late, it's 10 o'clock. Uh, but I will pull it out tomorrow and I will work on Nativity for at least that 100 stitches or an hour. And if all goes well and it's, it's rocking and rolling pretty well, I may try to get the rest of the three hours and have my whip go goals completed for the month. We shall see. Okay, I will tell you, I have uh, appreciate so much Carolyn Zook and Robin Hall for being planners and putting their information out early. That is so much fun. So I have planned my uh, Bringo board already for January, and I had a lot of fun doing it. And um, because there are some parts on there where you have to have someone else pick for you. Uh, and there's a question on there where you have to roll a dice and see how many of the uh, items on your project that you're going to stitch. So I got on a uh, conference call, sort of a, a Facebook messenger call, with my friend Lori and Dee and my friend Donna. And we all talked about what we were doing for each one. We rolled the dice together for one person at a time and each got our number of things we have to do. And we let one of the group pick each of our, you know, a different one of us picked for each person uh, what whip. So we got that part filled out together. And that was so much fun. So if you haven't done that before, you might want to try it. Uh, get together with a few of your friends and help, let them help you fill out your board, you know, give you ideas or suggestions or a whip they'd like to see you work on or something. That was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it greatly. So that's it for tonight. Uh, just a lot of stitching, <laughs> uh, which is wonderful. I had a surprise finish with my um, turkey trot uh, piece, which was happy fall, y'all. Uh, and then I had to catch up on my whip go board. So a lot of stitching today. But I hope that I have something to share with you tomorrow on Nativity. And I will talk to you then. And in the meantime, happy stitching. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back. I wanted to give you a small update from my stitching this morning. I'm still playing catch up on my bingo game, and I had to do yesterday's prompt, which was nativity. I needed to do 100 stitches in it, and so I pulled it out this morning as promised, and I worked on it a little bit. And I'll show you what I did. You may be able to tell I put all of the Lazy Daisy uh, Susan stitches in here and I uh, got those done and then I came back over here to Mary and I got all of her sash done, finished the cloak right here. I'm working toward this middle section so I can go ahead and get the uh, baby there to get the one over one done for her hand and the baby's face and arm and all that coming up. I want to get my three people placed in here with the angel so that I know that the uh, centerpiece that I, you know, that's being depicted is in there correctly. And then I, if need be, can fudge anywhere else uh, if I make mistake or whatever. So that's what I did today. And I, the reason I came over here and worked on these um, stitches is I want to go ahead and get this done as much as this so that I can roll it on up so I can get down here and finish the center section. I'll be doing the end of the border at the end of everything because that's where the crinic and all that sparkly beads and all that are. So I'm getting ready to roll it up. There's one additional stitch in between each of these green leaves that I have to do the next time I work on it. 
but it's a specialty stitch and I had enough stitches by the time I did all of that today. Um, so I decided, okay, that's good. That hits the prompt. We're gonna move on. <laughs> so I got that done. Now, the call for today is Royal Games. So I plan on going over there now and pulling out my Royal Games and seeing if I can't go ahead and get that done today so that I am caught up. The, um, my actual call for yesterday was a WIPGO call. And when I looked at my WIPGO board, the only WIPGO I had left was Nativity. And so I put another hour of my five into it today and I got 103 stitches in as well. So I've met the prompt for bingo and I've added to my whip go attainment. So now I only need two more hours before the end of the month. So that sounds good. I'm updating that now and I'm ready to go. So I'm gonna grab Royal Games and hopefully since I only have to put 100 stitches in her, you may get to see her tonight. Happy stitching, everybody. Well, good evening. I am here to tell you about my stitching this afternoon. I was able to catch up and do my Royal Games 1 today. I'll remind you of what that looks like, and I am working on the Queen of Spades. And so today I put 238 stitches into her and I finished her glove and her hand and fingers, including the back stitching. I had rolled up the roller frame to, so I could start coming on over here and work on her neck and head as soon as I finished her glove and I did that today. So 235 stitches later, that's what I've got to show. And I'm all caught up, yay! <laughs> Tomorrow is the last day of our bingo game. And um, so that means I, there's only one possible number that can be called. And funny enough, it's the whip of my choice. Isn't that a great way to end the bingo game? I love it. So, tomorrow, I don't know what I'll be stitching on because it will be my choice. I love that. Okay. I'm going to say goodnight. Um, Coco has been at her friend Fred's for a couple of days, and uh, she's coming home. They're going to be here any minute, and I can't wait to see her. I've missed her. So I'm going to close up shop so I can say hi to her, post my picture, and say goodnight. So happy stitching until I can talk with you again. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back. This is Dina. It is Saturday, um, November 25th. It was the final day of our bingo game in the North Alabama group today. And I decided to um, do something completely new and different today. I only have a couple of hours left to put in nativity and that's the final whip go call for November. So I looked ahead at December to see what the last two were gonna be called and to see if I might wanna do one of those because my bingo call was for a whip of my choice. And I decided I wanted to do something new. So I pulled forward my Jingle Jolly Joy. This is from Mitzi. Mitzi for sale at Luminous Fiber Arts. It's over a year old. It may be a couple of years old by now, but um, it was a Christmas mystery stitch along when I bought it. And I kid, had it kitted up ready for a December start because it was just happened to be in the last two um, pieces that were gonna be called on that whip go board. So today I decided I was gonna get it started. I was gonna use it for my 100 stitches in my bingo group. And then I discovered that if I stitched 400 stitches in it, I could actually use it uh, in my daily 30 group because I had a coupon to use the whip of my choice on one of them. 
And although this didn't meet the criteria that I was stitching for, the whip of choice lets you swap out your whip. And so I wanted to make good use of my coupon and I wanted to stitch on this one today. That's just the bottom line. This is the one I wanted to stitch. So I pulled it out. I got it set up on my roller frame and I um, started working on it. So I did the entire frame for the first of the three boxes and I've got the little uh, head almost complete. I don't have inside the ear and the nose on yet, but then I'll be working on the scarf after that. But all total, 434 stitches. And um, some of you have asked me before how I keep my side tensions tight enough. Well, this is how. These are suspender hangers. And I just have them attached to the sidebar. And that way I can pull them. I can attach them to my piece and I can flip them open when I'm done. And there you go. That'll loosen it up. And now, this is just a strip of Velcro that I have run through here, and I've wrapped it. I've left it long in case I have to use a really long roller frame on something, um, but otherwise, it's just small enough to, to sit here. But this one was flimsy, and so I wanted to use the, the side pull on that to keep it taut as I was stitching on it, which was great. So that means my um, bingo board for um, November is finished. And I don't know if I even have it still laying here. I think I used it. When I went downstairs to make my new board, I took it down so I'd have all the names of all my projects on it. But I'm going to do something a little different in December for my bingo board. I have decided to put all of my Christmas pieces on there twice. And then to just put a few of my other whips on there that I want to keep working on. Um, my sampler for all seasons because it could be Christmas. And I want to keep working on Halloween Quaker to push it to a finish um, next year. So I think I have that on there one time. But I also have my Whip Go Calls on there and I have a Whip of Choice on there. Um, I put one block that says my most recent start and one block that says a Whip of Choice. Because I wanna be able to have some flexibility in December as I'm stitching. Uh, to not have to change my whip every single day if I don't want to. So, there you have it. There are two big things coming up in December. Um, in addition, one is, on uh, well, sorry for the zipper pull. One is on December the 1st, Ronnie from Garon Stitchery, Ronnie and Gary. Ronnie is hosting a sow. And it's a stocking sow. I love the new hashtag. It's hashtag Ronnie Sock It To Me Sow because the stocking is, after all, a sock. So I am going to be doing Ronnie, I'm joining your sow. I'm going to start this December 1st. Um, and this is the Three Stockings for January by Blackbird Designs. And this particular stocking is called Winter Carnation. But I am looking for this to be a gift. I am wanting to make it larger than it is. The pattern in here, let me see if I can show you that, shows the stocking will only be that large. I mean, that's how big you cut it out. When you stitch it up closed, it'll be even smaller. So I want mine a little bit bigger than that. So it, it, that was stitched on 30 count fabric. So instead of 32, which I normally stitch on, I went back and pulled out a 28 count Brittany Ivory Lugana. It's a nice pale neutral. I think it'll look really pretty. 
with the stocking. I think that'll look really pretty together. I've pulled my colors and um, I have it kitted ready to go. So on the first, I will be ready when the time comes and um, can start my stocking with Ronnie and everybody else that's going to start with Ronnie on December the 1st. So I have it in here. I haven't even put it in a project bag yet. I just got through kitting it up today. But this was one of my new patterns I picked up while I was at um, Dying to Stitch. So this is a, a quick ability to use that stocking. I'm very excited about it. So that's fun. So I've got this ready to go. I'll hang on to this to December the 1st. I'm hoping it's a quick stitch. I'm hoping I can finish it maybe that first week of December and have a gift ready. Um, can't tell you who it's for yet, but I will uh, later in the year. Now the second big uh, thing I have going on in December is my birthday sale. And I'm so delighted that some of you are gonna be stitching on an ornament to go along with my birthday sale. It is for December 14th. You can either start an ornament on that day, finish it at your leisure. Um, you can stitch along with Glow and I on this particular ornament if you have it, or whatever you want to do. But this is Felice Naughty Dog. And Chloe and I both have dogs, so that means a lot to us. And uh, we'll be starting this on December 14th. I now have a hashtag. I have posted it out there, so it is live. And it is Dina's BD Sal. And it's written this way. It's D with a capital D, D-E-N-A, apostrophe S, lowercase b, lowercase d, capitals S capital A capital L and I'll write it across the bottom so that you can find it just tried to keep it really really simple um, but as I'm spelling it out it doesn't sound simple at all but anyway that was my that was my thought in the beginning so that one I have kitted up ready to go and that will happen on December 14th so I've got those good things coming ahead I have one prompt remaining on uh, one of my daily 30 challenges that goes through November 30th, but it is to stitch on a whip that has water and it requires 400 stitches. So I think I'm gonna pull out my By the Bay, work on my 13th colony for a little bit of time today uh, and see if I can't hit that goal. Um, uh, that should be about the amount of stitching I have left time to do. We will see. But it's been a very quiet Saturday. My husband took um, a long run this morning. Uh, and uh, right now he is running some errands. And then um, we will have dinner. And I think we're going to go walking today, possibly at the mall. It's getting kind of cold. But... Um, we would like to try to walk in. Uh, he's going to take Coco out first for her long walk. So that'll be, that'll be good. Well, I'm going to let you go back to what you were doing. If I get any more stitching to share with you tonight, I'll come back again. Happy stitching, everybody.